Uh, hello and welcome to the Code Maven channel. My name is Gabor Sabo, and this is going to be a really interesting new uh, meeting uh, with Johannes Müller, uh, who is going to tell me what is his nickname because I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. <laughs> uh, hi, Johannes. How are you? Hi. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I'm, so uh, just, just, just a second. So okay. the, the, just to tell you, this video is going to be about programming in Crystal specifically. Johannes has a very nice website that I started to build something similar, um, uh, but ugly. And uh, then he pointed out that actually there is something way better, way cooler. Uh, it already exists. Um, and now he's going to show us this, this website and uh, help me get started uh, contributing to it, basically. And then uh, maybe we, I can add all the features that I was planning to my website to, to his one. And then I won't have a presentation to give at the conference because then I don't know what to show. But anyway, so hi, please, please introduce yourself in a, in a bit and so. Yeah, so uh, my, my nickname is just Straight Shooter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm active on, on GitHub, uh, in the Crystal community. Um, yeah, I'm currently have the, the pleasure of like having Crystal as my my main job right now because I'm I'm working for Manas Tech, the, the company behind Crystal. And um yeah, I'm, so I'm working full time on Crystal mm, since nice. for, for three months now. Mm -hmm. It's really awesome. And I've been a member of the, the core team for about two years before that. And yeah, doing a lot of development on Crystal in different areas on the compiler, standard library, and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and one of my projects is uh, Shardbox, um, which I started, like I guess, like two or three years ago, but I finally published it last year, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm not so much ahead of you, <laughs> maybe a little bit of having the idea. Um, and I was, was really amazed to, to look at what you had come up with and see that it's basically very similar to to what I had like the initial thoughts uh, or initial draft of of, of uh, what later became Sharpbox. Okay, uh, nice. Uh, it's it's sort of I'm not sure that, that that I'm happy or or sad that I haven't seen yours before I get started. Maybe then I wouldn't have started at all, and and I wouldn't write in Crystal at all. Uh, <laughs> so it's it's a good thing maybe that I haven't, didn't see that one. Um, on the other hand. Well, whatever. And so, what is what is your background before Crystal? Before get starting to to work on Crystal? Yes, so I've been Ruby been programmer in, primarily, or yeah, I've you know? I've studied computer science and I've been working as a freelance developer mostly with Ruby and web applications, uh, some yeah, some other other stuff. But I've already also a background in Java, PHP, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, web development, but was was like thing I, I did most probably. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll usually don't say too much about myself because this is sort of going to be into my channel. But this time I give you some background. So as you explain, you 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 know what to or expect or not or. Yeah. Uh, so I I have been programming. I, I programmed in Perl for many many years. And in the last couple of years, I was right. I, I'm writing a lot of Python code. I hardly touched Ruby. I mean, so I, I now I, I started to write a few things in Ruby, and I said, okay, now it's easy because I I know a little bit of Crystal. I started Crystal, I think, a month ago, or so, months maybe, a little bit more or less, um, with this project uh, collecting data uh, about uh, shards, about Crystal packages. And uh, I'm sure that I'm really, really in the beginning of, of learning Crystal, but um, so far it's fun. And um, my main job sort of, so I'm, I'm self-employed for like more than 20 years now. And mostly I try, I help companies with uh, test auto, version control, uh, test automation, CI, CD, all these areas. So that's that's my main thing usually, but I like learning languages. So I le learned a little bit of, and used a little bit of other languages, but the, the two main language that I, I used um, were Perl and, and, and Python. 
And um, I've been doing this live pair programming uh, for, for a while now, for a couple of, uh, I don't know, for a while, a couple of weeks, maybe two months. And I actually really enjoy we had a couple of these projects uh, that we were working with a few people where we had like five, six, eight sessions of more or less two hours. And, but I also had these one-off meetings where we had some meeting and then we worked on something, some open source project, and then um, we hopefully both learned and made some progress. So let's get started with, with, with Shardbox. I guess first thing will be to uh, show you, I'll, sh I'll share the screen and then you can explain a little bit about, uh, yeah. about it. And then you can sure. tell me how to set up my development environment. Okay, so let me share the screen. And anyone who's, who's here in the channel, just I'm just shouting out, uh, you can't share or you can't talk, but you can chat. So ask theory or comment theory or whatever. Okay, so hopefully you can see the website, right? The, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> so I'm sharing the right screen. That's always a good, <laughs> good, good start. Um, okay. Shall I say what, what I know about it or will you, would you want yeah, to? Yeah, may, maybe just you try to explain it and okay. I'll so, see you if, if your I'll, understanding is correct. I'll tell you what I, was, what I wanted. I, want to, I wanted to create something where I collect uh, uh, information about every crystal based project. Uh, partially, these are metadata like um, uh, the license and the description and uh, and things like this like and uh, interdependencies so it's gonna be easy for for someone to see um, if this is a popular uh, low level library that many use or maybe this is a library that uh, in crystal it's easier a sort of because even user uh, even applications uh, can be recognized relatively easily from GitHub. In other languages where you have this central repository of modules or packages, they don't usually include the applications. But I would, for, just to, to example, to, to give you an example, what I was interested in, for example, if I learn Camel, Camel, whatever, yeah. how do you spell it, so, so, say it, uh, I would probably want to see all kinds of applications written in it. Uh, so that's that's part of sort of the, my goal uh, was and and uh, not only this level but also on on um, on the code level. So maybe I would like to see some kind of a, a, a data structure type or data type, and I would like to see how it's being used in all kinds mm -hmm. of of places. So I would like to index all these, and then I will be able to list all these and search all kind of ways and then can get to the to the to the to the code itself and and also like seeing dependencies of uh, that you don't uh, uh, declare because you just require something uh, and you load yeah. some uh, module uh, or whatever it's called and um, and would like to see okay how is it being where is it being used and how is it being used okay and that's one side and the other side is sort of is giving like alerts where something is missing or incorrect, like the, the way we, I, uh, the, the way I, uh, I, I wrote about it the first time that I had this list of of versions where I, I can see that you also have in the statistics uh, where you have uh, the licenses, for example, or crystal versions, and you don't point out here on my version. I sort of try to pro point out uh, cases where they are incorrect. Uh, I don't know if the I'm, I'm sure that there are a few here which are yeah, which are definitely. incorrect like this plus one, I think that's incorrect. So pointing out on the website, um, so, and that's sort of the other side of it again. So if someone would like to contribute for to something crystal based without having any specific idea of what, then we can, I can point them, okay, go and find these low hanging fruits where the version number is incorrect, where whatever, where there you don't have tests, Okay, so what I see in, in, in the shard box is that it's really nice. It shows the various shards, okay, crystal packages. I, as I understand, there is manual categorization, right? Yeah, exactly. 
For some reason, I don't understand why there are only 1,000 uh, charts. In my collection, there are like 2,000, 2,300, I think. Um, so uh, we'll see what the difference. Um, if I click on one of them, that it's really nice that it shows the dependencies. Okay, what the development dependencies, the the the, the runtime dependencies. This is, I think, the tree, right? Dependence, dependence. Yeah, that's the 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 other direction. Yeah, which shards depend on this one. Oh, okay. So this is the the reverse dependency or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you have the dependency tree, like the full dependency tree? Uh, no, 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 okay, not exactly. That. I mean, you 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 can see here in the dependence section how many dependents the other dependent has. So that's that's the all like recursive information that's currently available directly here. Can you here. see it? If I click on it or here? No, no uh, down in the dependence uh, section, like where a Kemal session is written, then there's in, in, in parentheses after the, uh, the name, oh. there's like 13 dependents. Okay, so, but, so, so, but, so he, he, a Kemal session depends on, on Kemal, and Kemal session has 13 other direct dependents. Okay, what, what, I, was, what I was saying is uh, direct. Okay, what I was thinking yeah. of is, Having the full list of all the dependencies of yeah. Kemal, yeah, that's... all just the direct ones, all the tree down the down to Crystal, and then, for example, collecting all the licenses. So, I yeah. would be able to verify that all the licenses are the type that I I, I accept, I I can work with or live with or whatever. Yeah, that's uh, definitely doable, but not yet implemented. Okay. Um, yeah. Activity. All, all all you have is like the. the the, to the the number the the total amount of yeah. dependencies that, that's what you have access to but not okay. like a tree view so right now. what i saw is this the owners which are uh, nice the little icons very few pictures actually yeah Many of these logos of <laughs> yeah that's that, that's sometimes just like github organizations and they yeah. have logos so yeah. i would probably would want to have a a page with gravatars of both the uh, owners and maybe also the, all the contributors. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a different thing. Yeah. So uh, stuff like this. Anyway, I think this this. Uh, would you want to say anything else about this? What did I? Yeah, I I, I think uh, your idea pretty much sums up what my idea was, and like big parts. I think are already implemented, or at least uh, the basis for them. Others are still missing, of course, um, because I somehow stopped at the the point where I knew, okay, this is something that that's useful for now, and this is the amount of work I, I could put into that at that time. And um, well, there's there's other ideas that how how this can improve, of course. Okay. So, what shall we do now? Shall I set up with, uh, how can I set up a development environment? <laughs> yeah, um, I've, <laughs> I've actually tried to look into that yesterday, how to, to make it easy, but well, I hope it, it works. <laughs> well, if, if it's um, not easy, then we'll fix it, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly, sort of exactly. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's part of the, the idea, basic. So I, yeah. I, I can click here on the contribute, and then I can see that there are like these two, um, yeah. Uh, Git repositories, shard core and shard box, shard box core and shard box web, yeah. and there was also the the the, the, the catalog, yeah, the, the shard box, which is different. It has a different name. So I already cloned them here. I have here shard box okay, core, yeah, and I have shard box. I cloned other two as well and called them shard box catalog, even though it's it's outside. It's not called cat, cat, it's yeah. Just catalog. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I have them have them here. Sure. Okay. So, um, well, the, the the main part is obviously Shardbox Core. Shardbox Web is is just the web application that that does the the presentation layer okay. essentially. And well, Shardbox Core is like the the main definition of all the data types, and there is the the worker that that runs in the background and collects the information. And yeah, well, maybe we, we start with a uh, shard box catalog um, just to get an understanding of how this 
or wh where the, the data comes from. Okay. Um, because this is like you already assumed this is somehow manually uh, curated. So in this, um, yeah, there's the, the catalog folder and there's a number of YAML files in there. Um, every YAML file represents a category and it includes all the, the shards in that category. So it's essentially just a reference to mm -hmm. a repository, most of them on GitHub, but it works with like any okay. git source. Okay, interesting that you decided this way. Can can one thing be in two categories? Well, technically yeah. here you can. Yeah, 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 definitely. So the the only I would thing do that... it in the other way, but yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, so this this is uh, the the idea from that is borrowed from uh, Ruby toolbox. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. It's, it's nope. a um, so in, in Ruby, you have Ruby gems, which are the, the shards in, in Ruby, the packages. And Ruby toolbox is essentially a, a, th a third party website that adds taxonomy on, on top of that. So you have this okay. kind of uh, categories and also a lot of like metadata information that, that Ruby gems itself doesn't provide. Mm -hmm. And so there it's somewhat easier because it builds on the, the the index that Ruby Gems provides, so the 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 catalog just has to reference the the shards from the index. Um, here we don't have an index uh, for for uh, shards, um, so we we need to like reference the the location of the the Git repository directly. Mm -hmm. So you have like uh, okay shard GitHub and then mirrors whatever. Why do you need the mirrors here? Um, this is for the, the like when in in this case for example the the repository was previously hosted at uh, slash router and then it moved to slash amber router and um, so GitHub now does a re redirect probably just there but the the old name is still used in some dependencies maybe mm. and we we want all of them to to come to the the new name exactly. Uh, okay. Essentially, um, even if if no one uses them anymore, we 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 still want to keep like the the historical references, like right. an older version depended on the 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 older name of this uh, shard. Yeah. Until you until you know someone creates a new repository and with the old name, that does something totally different. <laughs> yeah. Then then then. It's... Uh, yeah. probably uh, really complicated <laughs> let's hope not that this happens <laughs> yeah okay so you have the github the username and the, and the, and the description yeah so the the description is just to it's it's optional in in the the catalog um if there's no description then it just pulls the one from the the shard okay. uh, yaml file um but i mean it it helps to have a description here because this way you, you it can be somewhat similar between all the the shards here uh, listed here. Okay. Um, Shall I open another one? Yeah, if you want, sure. Um, just do anyone. Yeah, it's yeah, they all look more. Same. Yeah, it's always pretty similar. Okay. So, um, okay. Yeah. So, but I mean, more, most of them are are hosted on on, on GitHub. But there are a couple of, of other ones, so you. Yeah, I, I saw that there are a few GitLabs. Yeah. Already. Okay. Yeah, there are a bit more. Yes. Yeah. So these are these are the, this is the catalog, and then. Yeah. So the the way this this works is like, the the the, the worker on, uh, a job just goes through the catalog and puts every every shard that's referenced there into the the production database essentially and then these shards get like collected and, and updated and so um but but that's not the only source of of information because like when when a shard that's in the in the catalog has a dependency that's not in the catalog then this dependency is still pulled in but it's mm -hmm. it's not like categorized that's why we have yeah. shards that are not categorized okay 
so uh yeah so now we are in the source there's that, that that's not much uh, here it's just like tooling around the catalog tooling to make sure that it's always formatted and so what is for example the awesome is there is this or this yeah that's that, that's essentially the the seeding of the catalog there's an mm -hmm. and on github there's an awesome list of of awesome crystal resources and uh I, I used them to to fill the catalog initially, and sometimes I I check what uh, new ones are there. My camera's coming back on. <laughs> it just switches off for a short moment. Okay. Um, I don't know why. Um, yeah, so it's uh, just like synchronization between different uh, resources that have a similar approach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess we, we we should go to the the Shardbox core repository because that's where all the fun stuff is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So the the way this is structured is all based on on a, a Postgres database, which serves mm -hmm. as, as the place where <laughs> where everything happens, and it's it's a li little bit different from from what like many people, especially in web development, do where the Database is mostly a relatively thin piece of just storing information and maybe have some some kind of integrity checks, but but not too much. And and I think I've gone a bit uh, deeper here because essentially the the database does a lot of things. It has many validations and and triggers which automate things inside Postgres mm -hmm. itself. Um, maybe we we. we probably start so uh, uh you you should pull the repository because i just uh pushed a new file there earlier yeah, okay. yeah there's this uh schema overview um maybe we can look at that it's a svg so it's um uh, if you can open that in a, a visual ah. way okay it's, it's it's a lot of stuff in there um i think that's way easier than than sifting through the big okay. sql file <laughs> so I'll, I'll enlarge it and then i move it around this yeah yeah but we, we start wow. in, in the middle best yeah wow. it's 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 it, it it looks more difficult than it is i guess um mm -hmm. if i had done it manually i would or had put more effort in it then i probably would have uh Simplified some things there. It was generated I, automatically. I, I, this, this yeah, graph? Oh. yeah, yeah. I I just did a quick search what I can use for that, and I used to think it's DB Viewer. Thing. Okay. It's, it's it's a big database IDE kind of stuff, um, and it has some export function. I, I tried some other things and they didn't work out. So I'm I'm happy that I got something that at least somehow presents something that we can work with. Okay. Um, so the the main thing obviously is the the shards table, um, which this one. yeah, exactly. So, so th this okay. identify identifies each each shard. So we see it has a name um, and the description. This that's the description taken from the from the catalog, uh, mm -hmm. or if the, it's missing from the shard YAML file, then yeah, the categories. So you can have multiple ones. Um, I think the the other information is yeah not that important right now. Um, maybe it yeah. Updated the, edits, I guess, for about when the Git was updated and created that is also no. Fun. It's 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 just for the the database record. Okay. When was the record created and when was the last changed? Okay, so this is the updated add this. This is about the database. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the interesting part is probably the the qualifier column um because that that helps to like solve ambiguity issues when we have shards with the same name and um, because the the shards ecosystem doesn't have a central registry so you can have shards with the same name but different shards um so in, in that case shardbox automatically chooses a qualifier which is usually like the the name of the the owner so if it's foo slash bar on github then the shard name is bar or whatever it's 
success in the in the in the shard YAML, and the qualifier would be foo. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I I try to use uh, the host name like GitHub.com, the mm -hmm. username, and the name of the repo as the ID, uh, identificator. And yeah, that should be unique. Yeah, but it's it's a bit more more difficult or it's 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 not like what we usually or how we usually refer to 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 things because we say that the shard is camel and it's not github uh, camel cr right. camel um so th this is more like a human interaction improvement thing probably because like the most of the shards are unique by their name um, so and we, we can just use uh, that name to mm -hmm. relate to them um and i mean the also the, the problem is like when you have a provider like like github or gitlab they they have the the same url structure it's uh, the host name slash org yeah. or user and then the the repository name um but you can have any kind of url there where you can find an uh, a git repository um, so that, that that makes it a little bit more complicated, maybe. Um, yeah. Technically, every URL should be then um, unique for for a repository, but um, yeah, it's it's not super maybe ideal. And U maybe it should be the the URL of the repository, and that's it. That should be the yeah. without yeah. the details how the these are structured inside. Yeah, yeah, but th then there's again the the problem that I've already talked about when a repository changes. Then the name of the shard changes, but actually, well, the the shard stays the same. It, it just lives somewhere else. Um, so the, that that's kind of, uh, and we, we we with this name and qualifier system that removes some of the the tight coupling between the shard itself and the the location where you can get it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, but well, this is not all set in stone, of course. So, if there are better ideas how to do things, um, <laughs> we can certainly change it. But I, I, I think I, I really like that you can just use the name of the shard when it's unique. Then it just works. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, okay. Yeah. So the 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 next big part is the repos. Uh, table um so to the yeah. left top yeah um so every shard has at least one repository associated with it and mm -hmm. but there can be multiple one, ones as we already talked about because you can have like legacy urls or just plain mirrors that that serve the same content but different repositories are used as dependencies and different dependence and then they all Merge together because they all represent the, the same shard. Okay. Um, so when we look at the repos table, I think that's basic. Yeah. Those the the identification is the resolver. Is it like GitHub or Git or whatever? Mm -hmm. And uh, then the URL of that repository, and then the role. So there's always one main repository per shard. That's where Shardbox get pulls all the information from. That's has the the canonical role. There can only be one of them. Um, all the others are either mirrors or legacy or whatever. I think that's the the roles that we have currently. Okay. By the way, why are some fields bold here and some not? Mm, I'm not sure <laughs> why it does that. Okay. Um, maybe it's if it's nillable. Yeah, that that might be. Or it's it's bold if it's not nillable. Okay. Could be the case here. I'm not sure. Yeah, that looks kind of consistent here. Yeah. So for example, the the shard ID is nillable in in repos. Um, because you, you can insert a shard when it's just like, when we, we discover a new dependency or a new shard is inserted in the catalog, then a new entry in the repos table is created. And 
this doesn't have a shard associated yet because that's gonna, just going to be associated when uh, the next time we, we create shards or we we, we do that. Um, because maybe maybe the URL doesn't resolve right away, for example. Um, then we, we, we at least have the, the repos uh, entry, um, but we don't know anything about the, the shard that is, lives at, at this location. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, then the that's next is uh, to the top right, there's releases. Um, yeah, so you, you keep the historical releases, okay? Yeah, information about every shard release. So for people who are not like familiar with like how shards work, um, a release is basically a, a, a git tag with a specific format. So it starts mm -hmm. with the V and then a, a version number. Oh, so um, any tag can be a release. Yeah, as long as it follows this this format, yeah. Okay. It's it's not like GitHub where you have to manually create a release for a tag or something. So every it's tag not a, counts. Not a, as not a, a GitHub release. It's just a tag. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a Git okay. tag. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the, well, we, we we pull all the information about this release in. So like, what is the version of this release? Um, what what information does does Git give us about it? And then Spec is the the content of the the shard YAML file at this release. Okay, as a JSON. Yeah. Or, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. And the, the files you have a list of all the files that included in the distribution. Uh, what are these files? Yeah, files is. Uh, the files table next to yeah, it. Yeah, the files. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. It holds some file contents. Um, I think it's currently the readme. And I guess the the shard YAML file, the like the 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 original formatting, because the the spec value is uh, parsed as a JSON. Okay. And we I I don't pull in all the files because at, at this point they are not not necessary here. Um, if we'd want to do like more uh, statistics and stuff on on the code, then we we probably need to do that in a different way. I guess. Um, but we, we we need the the readme for example because the readme shows up on the the chart box web page. Yeah, I I think I, I what I started to do is just use the file system for for the files. So just download the whole the whole thing, unzip, unzip it or whatever. Yeah. In this case, just git clone, um, and uh, and I have the directory, and it's on the file system. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought this this could probably work. Yeah, but I mean, it's currently already pretty big and um, only growing when more shots are there and yeah, shots get sure. more, more releases. Case. And yeah, so the the, the thing I, I, I was thinking about is like the for the, the, the web interface, we, we shouldn't need all that information. We just need to show or we just need to have access for the the stuff that, ex that actually needs to be shown on, on the web UI. Right, sure. Um, right. So the, now the, you don't the, need that was the idea for pulling just a, a couple of important stuff into the database and having that ready for that. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, whatever else. Uh, yeah, dependencies, of course. <laughs> Um, so every from, from every shard YAML file, we, we pull out the, the dependencies. And associate them with uh, be between the, the release and what repository they refer to. Yeah, and the scope, I guess, is either production or or development. development. Yeah, that's I, I, <laughs> it's a bit. I think a bit question of what to call like the the default scope. As you you said uh, production, I think earlier I said runtime. I, I I choose runtime as well, but I mean, uh, technically it's it's compile time dependency because we don't okay, need them at, right. at runtime. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay, we just need some some name and <laughs> yeah. We actually there is no runtime. There's just compile time, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not even sure why do we need the distinction in Crystal. Um, it's because like when you 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 don't need the development dependencies when you just want to build the program. Okay, okay. So when you just want to build it, right? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, so what so for, for, for our production build, you wouldn't install the, the 
development dependencies. Okay, so what do you call a development dependency usually? Uh, uh, the testing libraries, do you call it develop development dependencies? Yeah, uh, testing, if, if you don't do testing, maybe. But I mean, mo most people probably use the, the standard library spec modules. Right, right. The, but if you need you, you something But if, testing, if you need something else, then you could put testing. it there. Yeah, or like uh, a linter or something. Yeah. Or, yeah, this kind of stuff. Or other development tools like a command line interface for so, creating okay. stuff. I so think. basically the assumption that you can compile even if you haven't tested it yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I think with, with with testing stuff, it's kind of a decision where, where to put that, yeah. But I mean, right. development dependencies are definitely stuff that you would only run on, on the command line to, to do some stuff while development. Yeah. I yeah. think in Perl, for example, they use three levels, like production, development, production testing and development. Mm, yeah. So I don't know, whatever uh, you need for the development, like the plugin to, to your editor. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so um, yeah, that's a dependencies table. And like, then we have like a th three-step um relation between a shard a shard has a release and the release uh, points to a dependency which is a repository um so and the, there's a shortcut for this which is called a shards a shard dependencies in the lower left yeah um one. which just makes the connection between a shard and um what it depends on okay so that that's that always reflects only the the latest release so what's what's currently the the, the main thing um because that that's usually displayed basically this could be a view on this one yeah 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 or a view consisting of release dependencies the, 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 um yeah okay yeah i think it's it's mostly implemented as a view on on dependencies actually yeah okay I have to this go, is go like, into the like, like this is this is like unrelated to everything anything yeah but but uh, well technically it is uh related to the categories column on on shards um but it's not implemented as a foreign key because it's uh, like an, an array of ids okay, okay. yeah and then the, like the, the owners yeah the owner metrics are the yeah metrics are always like stuff that's somehow either pulled in from from external sources um uh for example the well, popularity oh no that's a good yeah story. um well okay in honest we don't have that um uh, but if you look uh, to the lower right there's the shard metrics um are there, there's actually two there's shard metrics and shard met metrics current and well shard metrics current we can forget about that it's just that's again like like shard dependencies. That's just the the view, view of the shard metrics at the, the current release or current time. Okay. Um, but it's it's just implemented as a separate table. Um, so, but uh, in in the shard metrics, we have like the the likes count and watchers count. This is stuff that's pulled in from from GitHub, for example, if available. Mm -hmm. um, and then the others um, like dependence counts and transitive dependence counts. That, that's all stuff that's calculated inside the database. Um, it just counts how, how many dependencies it has directly and how many dependencies in, in total, if you count all them, all of them. Okay. So yeah, I, I guess that's, covers <laughs> almost all the important stuff at least yeah mm -hmm. do you have any so questions there, about that <laughs> separate table that's just keeping for the for schema versioning yeah hmm, interesting okay okay shall we switch to code sure okay by the way what do you use for development uh, I, i'm working with vs code vs code okay we can we can switch to vs code I don't mind. Whatever feels good for you. <laughs> no, well, I'll at least learn a little bit more about it. <laughs> how you use it? Maybe you'll tell me how to which plugin to use. Okay, so I. Yeah. 
Okay. So, um, well, I guess we could take a look at the readme or data model files because there's some, some instructions probably there. Um, that's not totally up to date, I guess, but <laughs> Crystal 30.1 probably won't cut it anymore. Um, Sorry? But it, uh, the, like the prerequisite crystal uh, zero point thirty, okay, it probably won't won't work anymore. I've not tested it, but it it, it works on crystal one point oh. So we've got, okay, yeah. So, so the 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 main thing we we're gonna need is a Postgres database, and then the rest is just crystal stuff. Ah, oh, yeah, and of course we're gonna need like if we want to do some database migrations, I'm using DB Mate for that. It's a Go application because um, I haven't found any suitable crystal migration tool yet. Okay. But we, we can look at that when we need to. So. Okay. So this is the data model, which is just an explanation, basically. What yeah, that's essentially what, what we went through okay. before. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, maybe we'll be just uh, jump right into the code. Um, okay. You tell me what to do. Yeah. Um, I, go I'll, to the. I'll just type and and you tell me what to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we go to the the source folder. And well, maybe we start with the db.cr. Uh, so th this implements like all the, the database queries. I went with this approach because, well, it, it started out like that. <laughs> and um, if you scroll down, like we, we see all the, they are essentially just individual methods and they, they implement the, the database query with nothing okay. in between, like, like no ORM or something. It's just plain the, the crystal DB shard with the Postgres driver. And then it just creates basic um, models there okay and for the the for the the worker part that that like collects information and updates the database that's that's totally fine um it works really well um but I, i've already like felt that for the the web ui it's probably better to have like a, a real orm uh, because it just simplifies a lot of stuff when you need to to do the same queries or modify them like filtering or stuff then that's really not that easy with this manual approach yeah does does that make sense to you yeah i think so okay i i i i only have bad experience with ORM, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, had experience with uh, like the active record on, on Ruby on Rails, and that that really works pretty well, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, what next to look at? Um, well, the 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 main like stuff happens in in service classes, so we could look at the the service directory. Um, it's up in the directory list. So like there, yeah. Mm, let's start with uh, maybe the, the worker loop, the, the last entry there, just to get a overview of, of what's going on there. So um, the way I run it in production is like we have all every time this 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 worker is running in a separate process and it's just constantly loading new information. I think um, it, it it tries for I'm, I'm not sure like the exact timing, but um, it, it makes sure that that every every shard is checked like every 24 hours if there are new releases or this kind of stuff it's still okay. available and uh, yeah it checks okay. it out and so you're, you're not accessing the you're not fetching like what changed from the, the latest changes from from github no i'm completely using the the 
uh, shards API for that. So mm -hmm. actually, shards is, is a dependency of, of uh, Shardbox. Um, using exactly the, the same mechanisms um, for discovering versions and stuff um, like you would do when you run your shards install locally. Okay. I mean, this is probably the, the easier solution because, um, I mean, the pulling in GitHub notifications or something like that would just, just works with, with GitHub. And we could probably do a similar thing with um, GitLab or whatever. But if you have like a plain repository lying around them somewhere, then you wouldn't have this information. So we, you would have to do this approach anyways to, to, right, to get the, right. but, the but data. If, if, as, as the number of uh, shards are, is growing, uh, doing this full scan every time, and like the most, most, most of the shards don't change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in any given twenty four hours. So. Yeah, definitely. We 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 could probably like um, improve that and do like make this depend on what kind of resolver we're using and for GitHub just uh, subscribe to updates. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's not. It's just a, a simple Git pull and then. Okay. Well, if there's nothing, then it's it's done really quickly. So performance is not really a, an issue, I think. Wait a second. That means that git pull git pull. So you have all the all the repos locally. Yeah, they 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 are checked out locally. It it works ex ex essentially exactly like you would do with with shards install. Um, well, the, the way shards works, it, it it pulls down the repository and checks it out into the, the lib folder. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. the, the, yeah, okay, those, <laughs> the, that, that's the, the background information. So it works, Shardbox works exactly the same way. So you have a, a central cache repo, uh, directory on, on the, um, so we'll, uh, either with, with shards and with Shardbox, it's mm -hmm. just when you on and and this this cache is always uh, global to your um, to your user. But um, then then you already have all the files on your computer anyway. Yeah. So you don't have to store anything in the database if you just want to. Uh, yeah, they they are available on the to to the worker process, but not necessarily to the the web uh, application. Okay, because they might be on different machines. That's what you're. Yeah. yeah. So I mean. Currently, I'm I'm running them them both on the same machine, and it's easy to to have like cross access between them. Um, but I I think it's it's just better from an architectural perspective to to separate these concerns because I can easily scale and move them around individually. Okay. Um. Yeah, maybe I'm not sure if you should go in more into the the, the integration with with shards. Maybe I don't um, know what what we could, what we could try to do is is uh, uh, is start implementing something. I mean, I try to try to um, set up. I mean, first first of all, let's try to set up the the uh, development environment. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, let's start that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be. I mean, I don't have Postgres on my computer. Maybe I'll okay. I, I'll install one. Um, but um, okay, and 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 let's try to see that that we can we can uh, have it set it up, and then yeah. once we are we're set up, we can try to do some. I mean, we have already one hour into the the, the meeting. We can try to do some little change um, and and see if that works. Yeah. Okay. Let's stop there. Um, so I I guess we we need some some way to get a Postgres for you yeah <laughs> yeah so do you do you run it on is it is in a docker or do you run it just installed natively i i just have it installed natively yeah um i guess it should work with docker but well the 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 thing the like the the installation or um database setup works is with directly with postgres commands so we have to run them in the in the postgres docker Either way, it should work, I guess. Hmm. 
Okay, let's try let's try that one. Docker. Uh, let me search for Postgres. Sorry, wrong window. Docker Postgres. Okay, yeah, so the, the, the first thing I think it just starts a, a database in a container and the second one that gives you access to the um, command line interface for uh, Postgres. Yeah. So we, we, we need the first one. So it's, uh, we, we call it, uh, let's call it short box. And uh, I don't want so many letters here, just secret. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Okay. Okay, it's running. Yeah, okay. I guess I already had it, uh, had a Postgres uh, Docker container. Yeah, that was, was really quick. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so what else do we need? Okay, well, I put it in the chat. Okay, what I'm doing. Um, yeah. So, so we also have it, uh, and then I can put it uh, on on the website. Yeah. I'm just putting up the, uh, so, the so review I should, for me. Uh, shouldn't I just run this one? Actually. Yeah, we we at, at least to try if it works. Yeah. I mean, this is now. I I, I should try to act as access it. No, Docker yeah. exec minus it shard box and then uh, i can go with bash yeah now i'm in, inside and uh, i need to use psql My, minus big u uh, postgres uh, big u minus big u and then postgres p p p u no big Big U, but uh, it was correct. Yeah. Post grass. And yeah. I also I think I guess I guess I need oh they don't need anything. Yeah, that that, that works because I don't need um, a password. Okay. No, it it has uh, local authentication enabled by default. Okay. So you're you're just saying, okay, I'm I'm using Postgres and I want to log in and because you're the, the root root user, it probably works, I guess. Okay. But I guess I would need uh, also access to the local files, not? Yes. So I, I need to quit and start it with, with uh, mounting the local files. Yeah, yeah, that's probably necessary. Yeah. So, um, so now the, the question is if there's make available in the Docker container or if you need to run it manually, but it's not a big deal, I guess. What? Docker? Oh, I'm inside. <laughs> Okay, whatever. Uh, so I wanted to run this, uh, but this time is minus V and uh, minus V V and then dollar the PWD yeah. and slash opt let's say yeah and i can't because it already okay, I need, I need to remove that yeah. remove shard box so i can i i also run it with well if i run it with okay yeah that should be good okay So this is where we have, okay. So you need make now, right? Yeah. 
So let's me let's see up get. Okay, we have up get. That's good. That's <laughs> a good thing. So that, uh, maybe we already have make. Just try so it. I'll just try to run run make. You say? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> up get update. Okay. So the I think the make file needs um, the the uh, URL to connect to the database. Um, so we then need to set, set that up next. Um, okay, that looks good. But so we we, we can it. just make yeah. And charts one not found. Of okay. Course. It, yes, I need also install crystal here. No, no, no. Yeah. We don't need that. It's just the. The default recipe and make is just the build recipe and it tried to build but we don't need to build here we just need to set up the the database okay um so we need to run make uh db or make no make test underscore db so now it tells us about the the missing environment variable so oh. we, we need to set that to connect to the the local database and uh, how do we do that? Uh, yeah, just uh, make this thing, and then it should be uh, Postgres colon double slash. Yes. Well, uh, let let me look at the exact format. Um, oh, I can search for it also. Uh, that, that, that's that's so correct what we had right now. Okay, and then it it's just. Um, Postgres um, colon then the the password. I guess it was secret. The password is secret. Yes. Yeah. So, so then, I... then now the, the username it's it's Postgres again, and then a colon secret um, local at localhost. Okay. And then slash. Uh, slash the database name i think it was or do we have any i oh, know we, we don't have a database name but we can just call it chartbox test yeah and i think you need an e in the uh variable name it's currently database sorry uh, in, the, in the variable name at the beginning then you need an e yeah that should do it i hope Okay. Um, ah, yeah, that, that's just um, because we are, we are the root user. Um, I, I think you just have to set the environment variable PG user to Postgres. Um, maybe try without the underscore. I'm not sure that. Yeah, that makes Oops. beautifully. So let me copy paste this one as well. Oh, my password is under the chat now. <laughs> my secret password. <laughs> yes. Okay. Great. So I, I think that that should be everything we need to do here in the okay. thing. Um, or... uh, yeah. Can exit the the Docker container. Uh, I'll just give it. Or uh, yeah, it doesn't hurt to, to keep it around. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're back here, and I guess we could just run make test now. So that's gonna install all the dependencies and then build, and hopefully work. Oh well. Ah okay. Yeah, that's uh, the stupid charts thing. Oh, um okay so we need um uh, oh, no we can't pass that directly we need to, uh, to place this in a environment variable called charts opts it's probably best to, to export that oops and now it did double yeah and make was that uh, test test Now this this should be fixed with a 1.1 release. <laughs> no, well, um, maybe it's shard up. Ah, uh, there you, you missed the T, so it's up. 
Let's Oops. Like yeah. This. Okay. Okay, that worked, but uh, yeah, it needs to run again because shards is stupid. <laughs> um, so now what does it say? Test that up as you oh, Okay, yeah, we, we need to, to set, up, set, set that up again. But now, well... It should be uh, the, the same thing, I guess, because I, the port should be exposed on localhost. So you I said, hope uh, uh, I'm not sure about that, <laughs> but we we need to access the the, the Docker. Thing. This one, yeah. Let's try it. Create DB not found. Okay, so mm, ah yeah okay. Wait, um, where exactly are we doing this? So let's test DB. Um. Okay, yeah, so th this is just make is doing like um, checking that that you that the, the database is available and somehow it fails to do that. Um, DB is not so we, we, yeah, we, we, that means probably that the connection did not work. So we, we can't connect to the Postgres database with this. Uh, yeah, URL. let's, 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 let's take a look at the, this. Uh, maybe you maybe you need to explicitly uh, expose the the port to the host. Yeah, I guess so. But uh, let's see if how do I do this? So if I stop now the shard, right? I can't do it while well, not shard. Sorry, the Docker yeah. container. And then I can restart it. Mm -hmm. And then the one that Docker ES minus A, right? Well, those tons of them. Okay. Um so how do you do how do you do that, you know? Docker. Um no. Um, Let me start sure. Docker. I, I almost never do this, so Docker yeah. start a container. Okay, so it's um, the expose flag. No, no, the, well, or, the, the, the minus p that part that part I yeah. know. Okay. How to expose okay. the port. I know how. I don't know how to restart the the container. Ah, okay, okay, uh, yeah. So restart just, just and restart. Then, uh, I think. Shard box and do if I, so I can. Yeah, let's try port. if that works. <laughs> which port do we, do, does it? Uh, five four three two. Five four three, three two. two. It's easy to remember. <laughs> five four three two. I I remember all all ten digits. Yeah, but I don't remember the order usually. <laughs> so if I do this, what happens? Let's see. <laughs> okay. Unknown shorthand flag minus p. Okay. I'm not sure that that I can do this here at this point. Um, when I restart it. Mm -hmm. I, Maybe I can only restart and it will do whatever it did earlier. So maybe yeah, I have so to... I'm 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 looking right into how to start or how to modify an existing container. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, you you could probably just use the container's IP address instead of localhost. Yeah, but if it's not sharing the port, then it doesn't matter. No, but the I think that the the container should 
have the 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 port available, but it's not mapped to to localhost. Yeah, but the the question: How do you map, map it? Yeah, that, you, you don't need to map it. You you just can connect to the container IP directly. Okay. So with with uh, Docker inspect. Okay, let's should... let's try to let's try to do this. Let's try to re restore this way. So Docker inspect shortbox. So this is supposed to be the IP address. Yeah. This is this window. Yeah. <laughs> so it's no that that was correct. The the local host part. Change change that. Oh. Right. Hopefully this is the one. Post. Yes. Yeah. No. Um. I'm I'm wondering now. No, ah, of course it doesn't work because um, it, it just swallows the arrow um, because we don't have uh, the Postgres SQL client um, installed here. That, that, that's why the the test for connection fails and yeah. it, it doesn't no. doesn't print an error about that. So we we, we can just probably just disable that. Um, uh, we can, or, or I, mean, I can install. Oh, you, oh, or, you, uh, you, you install PSQL, yeah. Oh, just PSQL? Yeah. I think it's PSQL, I'm not sure. Or it, maybe it's Postgres client. Let's see. Uh, if you complain. Once I manage to type in my password. <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't know how to do that. Oh. That's well, probably Postgres minus client. Yeah, Postgres VL client. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and how do you where do you run this uh, deployed? Where is it deployed? It's on your own server or some other place? Yeah, so it's it's on a VPS at at Hetzner, a German provider, and I I deploy via Doku. That's a, like a self-hosted Heroku thingy. Mm -hmm. So you just push a Git a, a repository or a Docker image, and it uh, deploys it. Mm -hmm. So okay, let, let's yeah. There's something. No, what? Could not connect to server. No such file or directory. Okay, what? So that that, that error says that it tries to connect to. Okay, that, wait. Let let's just try PSQL for now. Um, with this um database URL um. So like this? Yeah, copy the entire thing there. Oh, well, yeah, probably without the, the shortbox test. Ah, yeah, that, no, the shortbox test is okay. Okay, no, that works, great. <laughs> um, so, but well, I, I don't understand why the, the make file is, is um, trying to create the database because the database already exists. Um, so I, I think the, the best thing to do right now um, is just to, to disable the, the dependency in the make file and just say, okay, let's, well, well no, we, we, we can just run the, the build manually. That, that works fine. Just run a crystal spec and that should be good. What crystal? Crystal spec. Back? It's a spec, S-P-E-C. 
Oh, uh, spec. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's just. It's probably too much information about everything. <laughs> It's doing something, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Might take a short while. Removing files from my hard disk. Yeah, everything. <laughs> it's always, always fancy. Okay, it's yeah. hard and it's... Okay, so yeah, we need another <laughs> dependency. Okay, so it says only libgit2 is missing, so we just need to install that and then we should be good. I think it's probably the um, name of libgit2. It, it says that. Uh, I, I don't see it. And then the, the first line of the output to the top right. Above that. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> color wasn't. Yeah. No. Okay, then, then try libgit2 uh, slash def. Yeah, libgit2 dev. Yeah. Okay. But at, at least all the other libraries are already there, it seems. So now we need crystal spec again, then it should be good. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I, I was trying, one of the things I was trying is my project, uh, because, well, that's part of what I do, is to make it like a Docker Compose run. Yeah. Docker Compose up, and then you don't have to think about anything. It's, it should, yeah. should work. Unhandled exception, missing environment. Ah, OK. Yeah, we need that <laughs> again. <laughs> the... Just copy it from the other thing. Yeah. You can just export it to the to the oh. shell. That's too much. <laughs> uh, I have some other place I can copy paste it from. Yeah, so I was actually trying to, to set up a Docker Compose uh, thing for this. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that's working out or whatever. Because <laughs> um, I, I feel it's like when you have different, or maybe you could run everything in one, one com container or whatever. Um, but I, I feel it's like when, when you're developing on the, the, the host and then you, you need to run spec and does it rebuild the entire container or whatever. I'm I'm not not super familiar with how that that stuff works. Okay, so let's look at the <laughs> amount of errors here. Great, something is definitely broken, but it's probably a simple thing. You're connecting to localhost. Okay, so it couldn't connect. But why does it connect to local? Ah, that that was the the localhost thing. We need to insert the IP again. Yeah, I think it was one seven two. Ten zero one two. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, let's look. Uh, 17. 17 zero two. We could just try all the numbers and that's yeah. it. <laughs> one of them might work. Yeah. Okay, but by this we should probably just have built the spec to a binary and can rerun that without building it again. But uh, well, the hope is always that the next one is green, right? <laughs> yeah, that looks much better. Correct. Much better. Yeah. So okay. everything's good. <laughs> okay. I'll keep copy pasting to the chat. Yeah. Before I though this one is is in my own. Uh, well, the 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 IP one. address obviously might depend on. Yeah, it will depend what, on what their the local Docker chooses. Yeah. So wait a second. Where are you in the in the process of creating a Docker Compose? Have you? Tried? 
I I have a basic Docker Compose file, but um, oh, where is it? Um, I'm not sure if I have pushed it yet. But if it is pushed, then it's on the the uh, Shardbox web. No, it, it's not. But I can just add it here. Yeah. So because that's one thing that I could try to work help is. Yeah. Right. Okay, so here we are. I'm just doing it right now. I'm not taking any responsibility that, that it actually works. Um, but okay, yeah, I, I'm. I don't know if we want to look into that or just start with something. No, 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 no. Let's, let's finish this now. The setup here, and then once you, I mean, I can do separately on this work. Okay. On, I, we don't have to work. I would prefer now we work on on yeah on uh, better. code and 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 uh, and uh, that if if we'll, if you'll we'll have enough time for that. Yeah. Sure. Um, Okay, so the, the question is like, what do we want to work on? <laughs> I would like to see that it's working. Okay, the test passed, but yeah, I guess. Okay, so okay. we have to. Is there any data in the database now? Um, we we just set up the the test the database, test. so that that should be cleaned after the the test is run. Um, but we we can just build um, build the actual worker. Binary and and let that run. Okay. So that that would be. Um, let's hope it works. <laughs> um, make build. Here. Yeah. Good. This just builds bin worker, and then we can set up bin worker to have a database it can work on. <laughs> we should probably. Or maybe we can just use this the the same one we used for the test. Doesn't matter. I, I usually use different databases, one for development, one for testing. Um, but I think it's it's so what 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 I do and and um, I'll I'll can try to help with this that the test database is is generated automatically when you start running the test. Yeah, yeah. Database it with, with a unique name. So theoretically, you can run two the two tests separately on uh, in parallel, and it will have two data databases. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Yeah, and then it will remove that database, and that's it. And you don't have to know about the name of the database, and okay. that that's sort of okay. So let's try to run this. Um, we need at least the um, environment. Variable needs to be database URL without test, so we can just assign the, the same value. But with the Sorry? Um, we need the um, the database URL without uh, the the test. Ah, okay, prefix. so we need so the just, same thing. Uh, we just say database URL. Just, it's called database URL. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So now and let's try bin worker. Okay, and. Um... Oh, okay, <laughs> because we it wants to ask GitHub about stuff. Very it needs a very GitHub very token. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'll stop sharing now, and then I yeah. could define a GitHub. Uh, okay. Yeah. Great. So I need a GitHub token from somewhere. And where do I have it? Yeah, you can just create a. Personal, or I think it needs to be a personal token. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I have, yeah. I have them. Just I try to figure out where it is. Ah, okay. You you have existing one and just just re reuse that. Yeah. Yeah. It it just needs basic right uh, reading rights. So should yeah, be, yeah. I I, I guess should so. work. And yeah. does it need the username as well, or just uh... no, just just the the token. It's just for, for accessing the API, and that, that's good enough. Okay, uh, it partially works already. <laughs> 
it complains about something else. Okay, and let's see what's that. Okay, yeah. So that that's just the very simple command line interface and just tells you, okay, what do you want to actually do? So right now, like the, the database is empty, so we want to fill the database. So that I means guess. we need to import the catalog. Um, but for now, I mean, we we can it's yeah probably you use the the entire catalog but it's gonna take some time um like this so, or, or anything? yeah uh, i think you need to add catalog there you can see but well what i was suggesting is like maybe we, we just take a, a smaller portion of the catalog um okay how can i do that i uh, just abort and well, essentially, copy, you I copy, copy one file from there. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Just okay. copy it and just make a make a new new catalog folder somewhere and just place one category there. Okay, so we we already see that it's it's working. I mean, we saw that before, but it, uh, I think at the beginning it it showed that it's only uh, importing one category, so that that should be relatively quick. Yeah, so it's a lot of stuff. I think well, we we we, we can probably look at this once it's stopped <laughs> um, because it's it's hard to identify things right now. But and it's, it just goes through and sees what's there. Oh, there. No, no, it's processing my, my shards, yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess we, we chose a pretty big <laughs> um, uh, Interesting, because I saw that the file size is relatively was small, but yeah, but there are a lot of uh, dependencies, probably. Or maybe, no, wait, it, it shouldn't run the dependencies right now. It should should just import what's there, and yeah. dependencies are only imported later. Okay. Can we already, I mean, it's, it's, it's working. Can we restore the web application now and look at it? Yeah, we should be able to do that. Probably best in a separate terminal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we go to Shardbox web. Just let me look at the make file. Um, yeah, I think we can probably just run make build here. It doesn't need the URL of the database. No, the the build is always okay. We are just built in. Um, we just needed that for for the test. Okay. Your internet connection is unstable. Lovely. <laughs> well, the call still works. So I guess it's fine. Okay. So, what do uh, remind uh, me, Patrick? We need the the ignore crystal version again. I, I have it in the other one. Oh. I do. I yeah, do. it's a uh, shard shards, shards opts shards. Oops. I think it was with the S and then. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, and then now the dash dash ignore crystal version. Just put it in the chat so I won't forget it. Yeah. Git may be incompatible with Crystal One. GitHub CR. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's that's part of, of part of my uh, thing that okay, I'll find all of these and then I'll send yeah. pull requests or whatever. It's like okay, it's a an easy thing to do. I mean, it might be a lot of work, but it's an easy thing to do uh, to send this pull request. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You don't need to understand anything about the the software itself. Just uh, yeah, like, make the the dependent. Uh, ideally, maybe, ideally it it works. If if, yeah, if, if it's maybe, broken with the recent release, then you need more work, yeah. of course. Or or maybe uh, it starts with setting up the CI system and the tests. But that's that's how. Yeah. So this is like sort of what I'm trying to help people both with Crystal, but in, in other languages as well. That try to yeah, yeah. people who are who who don't have a lot of experience in programming um, but would like to contribute to an open source project now getting into yeah. a, a, a real open source project it's really hard and the, the easy stuff is is gone I mean if it's a it's, yeah. if it's a project then then you don't have a lot of easy easy things to do um, but this yeah. way you can you can sort of find okay they didn't like me. Oh, okay, Lips yeah, us. Lips us. <laughs> There's always something missing. <laughs> um. uh, that's also probably dev, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. We can see. Well, it, it yes, found it. <laughs> good, good guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, this is done in the meantime. Great. I think the build times are, are rather long. So yeah, I like do you have a recent uh, computer or is it an older model? It's not very recent, it's like two two years old, I think. Think, okay. think bad, think bad thingy, La laptop. It's not very okay. strong, but um, yeah, but well, I would expect it to run faster. I think, yeah. maybe it's just a <laughs> wrong impression. I don't know. It yeah, actually okay, is only two, two real there's uh, Yeah, there's so that there's really a lot. Of load on on all the cores, I guess that explains it then. And I mean the the compiler only runs in, in a single thread, so it's uh, probably yeah. Ah, so the video we had a lot always. of load because of the video and the recording. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I I, I saw that. Uh... Well, yeah. Well, at, at least it looks like the the scheduler might be putting other things on the the core that also reduced by the compiler um, so now we we should be good here um, we just need the database url again so i have it here but in, without the test i guess yeah exactly don't think we need the github token here just run the bin uh, app app App, yeah, it says there in the oh, okay. Output. No, I saw it. Okay, so we, yeah, we, I mean, it uses uh, Raven for Sentry, uh, uh, uh for collecting uh, like information at Sentry, but we, we don't need that if it's not set, it doesn't use it. And if you set the configuration, then it connects the Raven, uh, Sentry, and yeah, but for this testing thing, we don't so need it, but you, you should be able to go there, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Crystal so, shard box is running on my computer. Brown. Yes. Web and we have one category of shards. Yeah. Okay. So Quite a number of ones. Okay. Good. So that's that's the the very basic thing. Um, uh, like if you go to the the homepage, you see that there. Um, a lot of stuff is, is missing. 
because we don't have the popularity metrics right now. Um, it, how, it, how, do you do, how do you collect those? Yeah, we, we, we run the, the worker again and tell it to do his ah, okay, uh, okay. other things. Other things, yeah. So, so, the, so the first one really just pulled in the, the shards that are there and it, I, it, it didn't do any much of any, uh, anything else there. So we just oh, run yeah. bin worker and now we go like uh, update metrics is run every yeah once per day usually and that 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 updates like the dependencies count and all this stuff so right, but we try you, that I mean you pro you have it on the server the a cron job that runs update yeah. metrics, right yeah so I can exactly. run here update metrics now yes and that's it yeah. So it's a cross reference between the data. Yeah. So it's it's fast. Okay. And sync repos. Yeah, that, that's the the update thingy. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's the, the repository. Apply, and, yeah. It has a lot more stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, so what can what shall we do now? Um, well, we could run the sync repos thing. I'm not sure. But we probably don't need it right now. No. Um, no. I mean, it thinks already yeah. repos, right? It it has these repos. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not sure, but okay. Yeah, it, it says there are forty seven uncategorized uh, shards, so it it are already pulled in those that are not in the in the category, but are like referenced. So I I wasn't sure if if that happens directly with the import chart, okay. or if we need to run the sync again. But okay, that yeah, then then we are good there. It it works. Yeah. So, do you have any anything like really easy thing to do? Mm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I uh, I think you had some ideas, and I think we might just be able to pick one of them. Yeah. If we you can want. go and and click on on Cecil license or yeah. let's say have licenses. Yeah. And when you click on the license, it would list the shards with that license. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's one of the things where I think um, like having an ORM would really be nice um, because then you could have like just a single like filter view and and just tell it okay let's filter by license. Um, okay. But but we 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 can start with a, a simple implementation for now. I mean, the, the good part about this is that we don't need to change anything in the data format or whatever, just... Yeah, so I stopped the web server now, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll have to recompile it anyway. Yeah. Actually, okay. So do you, do you develop it? Uh, how, how do you develop it? Do you run a web development server that reloads all the time? Um, no, I usually restart it manually. Um, but but well, what's what's really practical, I think, is um, I'm using uh, Grinja, which is my own templating engine, which uh, based off the, the the Python Jinja engine. Okay. Um, and that that makes it really easy because you don't need to recompile the binary every time you make a front end change because all that's implemented in runtime uh, templates. Okay. So that's really easy to do. Um, but of course, now we want to add a, a new view and need database queries for that. So we, we need to start something else here. But let, let, let's start with the, okay, you know what? Let's start with this, yeah. we change, we add the link here. Yeah. And it's, it's now running. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully. Okay, yeah. let's add the link and that should, I, 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 that yeah. update, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's just the front end change. Yeah. So we go to uh, app and then views. And then, so we are here on the pages. The statistics starts page. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, oh, it's not in pages, it's just stats. Yeah. And then we were sorry that I'm jumping. It's licenses, I guess. Yeah. 
And here we have some yeah, table, have, yeah. and then we would like to have, uh, well, do we want to have link for each one of them or? Yeah, probably. I mean, except maybe, yeah, well, e e even none could have a link, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's actually something that I, I would really yeah. want. Okay, just list all of them that don't have a license and now go, yeah. go and and tell tell them to yeah. the, add the license. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so let's just add it there. Um, so in the name. In the, yeah. And um, some, so I'll, I'll save this and now it should work already. Oh, these yeah. are things now. Yeah. Okay. So the, this this really nice. I mean, if you were using uh, compile time templates and you would have to rebuild yeah. the entire thing for every little change and that's, just okay. really hard, <laughs> but it, 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 it takes a lot, lot of time while developing this stuff. And okay. it, performance is, is still really, really good for this. Okay, so I guess it, it needs to be something like slash search here. Yeah, probably. Search and then uh, license equal to, and the name. Yeah. Okay. Good. So now we'll, we'll hopefully have a statistics, and then now this, the links are showing. Yeah. yeah. I can click on this and then search for. Okay. Well, the search has to change, of course. Yeah. Exactly. And, um, okay. So we change this. And yeah. So now, now we need to. <laughs> and a root for that. It's in this in the app implementation um, or in, in no it, no SRC, it's SRC in source yeah and then we go to um, right app pro no I don't think I would yeah let's look into that. <laughs> so it's in uh, source. Up is where yeah you have source the, app yeah okay that's okay. where you have the yeah well, I'm I'm sorry I'm a bit confused because I have like a development branch where I remodeled some of the stuff um to to be based on on uh, uh, Athena I think yeah okay. or at least I started with that but uh, so <laughs> uh, not, not always entirely sure where stuff is currently placed at, um, but we, we, no we're totally, totally fine to, to work on this here now. Um, you would want, you would, you, you would be laughing a lot if you heard me talking about my projects, but I'm, oh, interesting things I find. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always surprised when I'm reading my own code. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, so, okay, the, the search thing, yeah. So I think basically we could start with like testing for a license query param and then like this. do something else, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I would remove like the, the, the or uh, empty string part. So we can just say if, if the query parameter doesn't exist. No, we, we need to, to keep the question mark. Yeah. yeah well, so in, so now, now it's either the, the value as a string or it's nil. And we can just easily test if it's nil, then we don't need to filter by license. And then it, I would put it inside, right? The, because that yeah. would be the different. Yeah. So I would say something like uh, if license, uh, well, we, we we can actually probably just pass the the license to the search method because I, I think that that's what we could just do just alter the, the I guess. yeah so we we go then to the database implementation and just change this this uh, SQL query to include the the license thing. It's so steeper, yeah. Probably mm. just crap for search. Yeah. 
That's it? Yeah. Okay. So now we need to, I think, add a... That should be an exact match, right? Yes. But we well, we, we need to make the... Um, we, we need to add a where condition, but we need to add it optionally only if the, the license parameter is, is okay. present. Right? So we, uh, we we can do this similar to the, the query thing where we just, okay, uh, let's call it license query a, a variable and, and give that a value and only if, if license is present. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm not sure I understood what you mean. Okay. Uh, Here, uh, have, have, have we just do the, the, the if license there. So you say license equal to... No, no, uh, if... Yeah, yeah, basically. Like yeah. this, and, and yeah. license equal to this question mark, yeah? The placeholders? Uh, uh, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, that's... Yeah, cool. okay. I think. No, no, wait, it's it's uh, down there. We, we see it's uh, it's dollar two. Oh, it's dollar or something? Yeah. That's I think we have dollar. we currently use one, so it's no, it's two. Yeah. Do we have here license? That's how it's called. Okay. Yeah. Um so select something. And then we need to be have it in the bear close, right? Yeah. And it's like name, like, or qualifier, like. Okay, so you have a big or here. Yeah. Yes, I put, have to put it in, in a pair of parentheses. Yes. And then I would add here uh, the license somehow. Yeah. And so you... You can use this is a, a, a big here dog string, but you can use string interpolation. Yes. So interpolate the license, and where where is the the second parameter coming in? Where are the parameters sent in? Ah, so this uh, is the SQLs. Yeah. So in in, in the the first uh, line before the, the the big SQL query ah, starts. Okay. So there's there we call query all. With the first argument is the the, the okay, so SQL string, and the second is query, and then we need to li add license as third parameter, I guess. Okay, so that, but that I, I need to rename this because yeah, it's better, of course. Because now I, we have the same thing in two yeah. things. Oh, I we mean, overwrote it. Yeah, I mean it, it would work. We don't need the the license thing afterwards, but it's. No, but, but it's, you, it's it's cleaner cleaner that no, way. But, but by this time, I I replace this with the end string and ah and yeah yeah value, right. right yeah we still need it. I was wrong. Okay. So here we have this one and the license too. But uh, will this won't this break if uh, we don't? If if we if this we don't add this one, no, because uh, we are well, we we need to to guard that uh, assignment by an if license, so to make sure that that license exists and yeah. But then just... then we, we pass this value okay, if license no, you, it would be license dot nil. But uh, but we you uh, can skip the the method. It just if license then that 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 works because that that would be falsy if license is nil. Like this. Yeah, I think that should work. But if you pass in, but if you don't have this, then you all, you only have one placeholder, and yeah. you are passing in two values. Which one of them is false is not is nil, but yeah, I'm. I'm not sure if that's a problem. I I don't think Actually, it should. I, but... I found out in at least in SQL. Okay, the, right, yeah, that you can pass in an a, an array. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Here. That's what the, the, you might recall. That I had a, had this question on how to pass mm -hmm. in uh, an array only values of the of an array, but you yeah. can pass in with the args parameter. Yeah. So shall we try to compile this and run this? Well, it, it, it doesn't work right now because I think we need to 
adjust the the query um because license is not uh, um, a column so we need, we need it, it yeah <laughs> it was also that was correctly good. yeah but but it's also um like we need releases dot spec i think that's where the the license is uh, located yeah, it is. it's in the the releases uh, table on the top right and then in in the the spec column which is the the json b and um, the license is somewhere in the deep as a, as a json yeah oh so you, you you could like search for for license in this document i think you did that before and then we we could see like the accessor we using in other statements for that okay i didn't understand that sorry uh just uh grab for for license in this um document so you you can see the the database uh, selector I'm, I'm using for the, for this thing in in other places look for license that's what yeah you see. yes so this is this like the the spec dash uh and then the greater science that's this, the thing we want yes so i need this this here yeah like and this. yes and i think we we need um no it should probably work we have like the releases table is joined so yeah that should work okay let, let's try it <laughs> okay so i need but, to go and and uh, make build this one yeah you probably wouldn't need the the shards opts right now because it doesn't install any shards but it doesn't hurt okay, okay. So, so okay which have string 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 but it has an it has a variable or, or yeah star arcs is there so that, that that should really work i don't know what complaints now yeah so this also gets the arcs array so probably let me show you yeah. what, what I, I thought is that we put create an array yeah yeah that i'm not sure if we need to do that for the the variable number of, of arguments but probably so it's we can just do that here so we have a, an array where we have uh, well the query is inside yeah but you need to place this line one down because query is just changed there right. oh we, no, okay. technically you wouldn't we, you could just place the the string literal directly in the in the array yeah, but yeah. it's it's fine like that yeah that's next that's the that's for refactoring yeah then here we have uh, arcs push uh, license right and then here i have arcs equal to arcs now it's uh, arcs uh, colon arcs or a double colon this one yeah and then a comma after arcs after the the, the value oh. okay yeah. yeah the 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 equal sign thing is really confusing sometimes i think um, you know i what, what was it I, I think i don't remember i was writing uh, crystal code so i started something like if something then i put a colon after it because it's python right yeah <laughs> and then i indented properly and then i put a closing curly brace yeah no, I didn't open it with a curly. I closed it. With a curly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lucky, lucky. I was like, good, good, doing it good. <laughs> yeah, we're all creatures of habit, right? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes habits mix up between each other. <laughs> yeah. So it's compiling. Mm -hmm. Happily. yeah 
Yeah, that's that's not that uh, fun this way. <laughs> Definitely takes too long. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You 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 can abort now because it, right now it just builds the worker which we don't need. Mm. We could tell, by, uh, by we could way, use ma make bin app next time to, to just put that. <laughs> by the way, let's just show you. This is when yeah, it's not doing okay. anything. Yeah, yeah, that makes so sense. This is like, uh, well, if, if, if the scheduler would be like really intelligent, then it would place all the, the other things on, on different cores and give crystal a full core. <laughs> but well, I guess you could tweak that. Okay, that looks. Like it might be correct. <laughs> okay, so what were we doing? We were using BSD to close. That's yes. uh, okay. We might want to show it also, not saying search for and okay. Come on, Mark. And then it says, Where does it say the license? Here it is. On the right, license. yeah. To close. Okay, so let's go back. And what if I say Apache 2? Then we have like five. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, none. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because none is not not a value. We would need to add a rule that if it's none, then we should check where it, yeah. uh, it's null in the in the database. Okay. So, shall we continue doing this? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, we should at least add the the none handling. Okay. So what we, we do here that if uh... well I I'm not sure yeah we probably do that here I mean ideally we could probably do the 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 non parsing part in the in app.cr but then we we would need to have some kind of way to communicate to the search method um, like when license is nil or when there is no, no filtering by license so we just do the none part here it's easier for now okay so what we say is something like that so if this if the license is none then the query should be somehow different right yes yes so i think we we just add a different branch there yeah license none like this yeah. right yeah but then we not just the the query but also we, we don't need to push anything to arcs yeah but yeah uh, else yeah and right and then here we do something else so we yes. have we have a different query yeah and how does this say is none or is it's null? Is null? Yeah, and, and we need to remove, I think, one of the the greater signs in the operator, um, because oh. uh, the, this um, like the, the the JSON accessors are like if you have uh, this one, it returns the the actual JSON value, which is not a string, in, because it's just a the JSON data thing, and we use the the double greater sign uh, in the other because then it converts the value to a string, and we can directly compare to a string. Okay, so you say make but not build, but M make bin app. Bin app. S bin slash app, just the the file name. Okay. Um. Yeah, so this one is is going to be interesting because so now you're checking whether basically that the, the license field doesn't exist, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but there of, could be theoretically that the license field exists, but it's an empty string. Yes, exactly. And there are all kinds of other things that that we we still need to care about, like like using different names for the same license. Because there, there's no 
like validation on on what you put yeah, there. So, so, that's, so that's, some could use Apache all caps. Yeah, I, I mean, it was use Apache all down. down. Oh. Yeah, there's there's a lot of <laughs> of things that. But I I, I wouldn't there. I mean I, I wouldn't care about uh, at this this search. I would specifically yeah. look for the ones that are written this way, and then. Um, try to persuade the people that use the standard wording for it yeah but there are also different standards so um, i mean we, we could consider if we like um, i think that the, 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 I, I saw something like this in in, in short that it says that it's, it should use the the string that was given by the open open source con consortium yeah. I think it, it's a good idea to have a standard list of, of strings that map exactly to the license. I mean, there's not a, not a huge deal to people to be able to pick from there. Yeah. It's not like uh, you're limiting their um, um, expression. Yeah. Just okay. If, 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 if you want to use Apache 2.0, then we use the same spelling, please. <laughs> yeah. Mm, PG. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it doesn't have a, a license. Correct. It, seems it doesn't have a license. Yeah. And Redis doesn't have a license. Okay. So we have this part. And I guess that should somehow display that we are searching for the uh, for the license, license. Yeah. and uh, if there is no search for then then it, it probably should not say so yeah okay. so shall we finish this or shall we stop the video now and uh, i'll try to do it myself and send you the pull request your your it's up to you we can continue okay yeah. if, 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 sure <laughs> so the that part of the code is there is is done so i guess where is this this there probably there is an search for so, 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 uh, yeah it should be app search, search. for <laughs> okay so it's up views so i will yeah we probably still have to pass back the license Name yes. in order to display it so we still have to edit the other file yeah some, some so, other file at least yeah so we, we could do that first just edit uh, source uh, app source app and i'll keep this one as well okay Ooh, that's not what i wanted <laughs> okay let's just do this um so the search yeah is so we basically just need to add another Oh, the, uh, the render. To the render. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. it. And then we could take care of everything else in the template. Shall I straighten up this? Yeah, but you don't need to. The, the formatter takes care of that. <laughs> ah, there is a formatter. Okay. Yes. We yeah. can. Yeah, well. Type random right random order code and then that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Then so that's it. That's it. Enough. That's it here. I, yeah, that should do it. I can already go and you can, yeah, build it exactly. And then in the meantime, we can and the, try to and then that, that that's the, the nice part of about runtime templates. It just let let's build the app and we 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 will still be editing the, the front yeah. end. Yeah. So it was a views search. Use search. So this has a search on chartbox search for. So that's now yeah. how should what should it be say? Well, I, I think we, we should probably add like an, a condition if, if license is present, then we change that and but well, we could combine like uh, searching uh, or regular search query with the license search. So we we should keep still keep this for code thing, but yeah, we but can. Well, this, can should, this should be also in a condition, right? Yes, yes. But I think 
well, we, we, we still want to, to show that um, when there's no license uh, argument. So um, I guess we, we need to duplicate that or something. I'm not sure. Okay, so well, let's start with one thing probably. So, yeah, yeah, that, that should be good with license and uh, an end if and if you. Okay, uh, so this should this should be let's see what happens now. Oh, because I didn't replace it for with the license. Yeah, but that's easy to change. <laughs> Great. Good. For uh, maybe instead for license. Yeah. Or with license, maybe. Hmm? With license is probably proper. And we, we can probably lose the, the quotation marks there. Maybe. I don't know. But that doesn't hurt to have them. Not sure. Yeah. Okay. And then shall I put the other one also in condition or shall I keep it like this? Yeah, so I, I would say that to make a condition to disable the for if the, the, the query is ample, as empty and license is uh, present. So that, that for this, this view, that... we, we would have search with license none. And but, but then, if then you... the base doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's grammatically not <laughs> super. Great, yeah, but well, we, we can change it back to four license then, yeah, yeah. Let, let's do that. You can, so, you can keep it, keep it this way. That's also also good. I mean, uh, yeah, it's not, not not super confusing. Yeah, yeah. It's probably and then fine. from from there you can you can move on. Maybe later on you yeah yeah. You, we we have this search and license also, so they can be yeah. this. What kind of yeah. meta stuff? Yeah, yeah. So I, well, what, what I was envisioning for for this kind of stuff is to have a like a, a query parsing mechanism, so you could do this similar to how uh, like GitHub issues filtering works. So you would would place license colon none or whatever in the in the search query itself. So that that would be like next door. Next step or the next right. step after that or so. Um, yeah. Okay. But so shall, shall this... I do anything else with this now? No, I, th I think that uh, looks good. Just let's commit this and. <laughs> okay. So I think the only changes were in the web web side, yeah. right? Yeah. Git status. It's just Git presentation. Diff. So. That's good. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So get uh, um, yes, licenses. Okay, branch name. Yeah, that's quite a mouthful, but <laughs> I guess it's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I, oh, we, we should probably run the formatter now. The sorry, what? It's the formatter, code formatter. So it's just oh. crystal tool format. Okay. How do we do this? Crystal tool format. Mm. And with the uh, empty space between. Like this? Yes. Okay, 
produced changes so we can look what what changed <laughs> yeah so that again of course that was the correct indentation there or, oh, i think you can just uh, you, uh it's a single m it's a single dash i always no single m I meant with only one M and then yeah, the, the double. One? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So we it, it something else there, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So it now now with a with a single uh, dash, it, it it passed it as dash A dash M and then the message and then there was another magic message. <laughs> you can use F. And sorry, uh, you, you could uh, fix up instead of squash, then you wouldn't have to reformat the thing. It was would with fix up, it just picks the uh, message of the first commit. But just keep going now it was for the, the rebase thing. Yeah. So what 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 the, sorry just what what you say earlier that I could do what git git yeah if you do yeah and no just start that just hit hit enter I want to show you there so you you were doing like you wanted to to yes. um squash them together so if if assuming we would want to squash these two commits there then you could on the the second commit you could use fix up instead of squash and okay. yeah yeah i don't do this because now it's a different change already yeah no you yeah you you don't have to but just no, I mean, to, okay. to, to know for 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 just for information that uh, it's it's yeah. easier to to okay. use I'll, I'll try that i didn't know that okay so git uh, log i have uh, this one uh, thingy okay and now I can go and actually uh, GitHub. Uh, what was that? Uh, Shardbox. Shardbox. Shardbox web. I think you still need to push it to your front. Uh, I need to fork it. Uh, if you haven't already, yeah. And uh, then now uh, this is the thing, right? Git remote add fork and git push a minus u fork and what was the name of the branch licenses you have it in the in the in the yeah i just added this recently. ah great <laughs> like yeah. a couple of days ago i i, I <laughs> <forgot> this. <laughs> yeah that's that's really helpful <laughs> yeah and i already forgot it <laughs> and it also changes color whether you are committed or not or in what st status are you so okay, nice uh, so that's it so now i can send you this pull request <laughs> yeah i think that's fine <laughs> good so, so let's see if people approve of that <laughs> oh, yeah, <right. laughs> I think it should be good. So unfortunately, I don't have any uh, specs for the the web uh, tool right now. So, so that's uh, also something that can can be done. Uh, yeah, think. but the, it can be done, of course. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, I I usually try to do that, but well, uh, it it started out with like just putting stuff together and then somehow I had something that, oh, it works, but okay. now I do all the work again to, to probably add specs. So I didn't get around doing that until now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So what, what are the plans with this now? Not with well, the specific change, with, 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 with... Yeah, with, with Shardbox. Oh. So I, I was thinking that I need to restructure a few things. So I, w one thing I looked into was migrating to Athena as a framework so right now I'm, I'm using like plain kmal with with basic rules uh, roots and stuff but 
I, I think Athena could help a little bit more with like adding more API stuff there, for example. Um, but Athena is another web framework in Crystal? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, and another thing I've already talked about is like adding an uh, ORM to make some stuff simpler. I, I think I already have this working more or less with um, Clear. It's a mm -hmm. Postgres-based uh, ORM for Crystal. Um, yeah, but I still need to finish that part. Okay. And after that, well, it's it's better suited to, um, yeah, add new features and stuff to the the thing. So, so where can one, where can where where can or should one contribute these days? Oh, well, everything. <laughs> um, there's there's no limit. I mean, this, this all this refactoring thing. I, I think it it doesn't stop anyone from from working on how it is right now because the the changes can easily be be ported later to the the okay. other thing so that that's okay, that, that not, is... not not that that important to to like wait until we have the new one but i i won't start like any big feature additions and until I'm, I'm settled with a new basis for that okay good but like these these the, the simple things can be added like um uh, um cross these cross links uh, yeah i guess sure of course and um yeah okay well we'll see um uh, maybe i'll open up a couple of issues and then you will be able to comment there whether it's interesting yeah. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. later or or whatever yeah. that would be which uh, and then it can be well it's always a question which on which one to open uh which one of the three projects because some like some not only just i mean for for some of the web features you also need the back end to yeah exactly to, yeah the core to support it so yeah. um, okay so do you have preferences on which one to open the issues um no so so far not not really um but i guess it, it doesn't really matter that that much probably I maybe mean, we could also decide to have like um issues on the on the project or discussions i'm not sure how that works on github but well, i think okay. pro probably it's like if, if it's adding more like a front end thing then it's chatbox web and if it's something else then that goes deeper into the details and it's mm -hmm. probably better at chatbox core but I'm, I'm not sure maybe it's also better to to have all them in one place there's not not said that much uh discussion going on right now so We'll have to see how the, how this evolves, I guess. Okay. Well, good. So thank you for explaining me about Sharpbox all, all, all the stuff and then and, and going through with me to to be able to to do this little change and uh, spending like two hours on this. And thank you for writing it for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, everyone else who has been watching, please remember to. I don't know, like, and I guess I already put some link to, to your, your to your LinkedIn page, I guess, the GitHub page. I'll add more more of these links under the video. But everyone else who is watching the video, please like the video, share the video, follow the channel. And uh, do you have anything else to to add now? Just before well, um, just want to say thank you for for doing this. I mean, this this is I think really great, mm -hmm. and like you help helping and we talking about things that. And probably engaging others in into doing more stuff hope, and, or educating. Yeah, that's really, really great that you yeah, do I that. Hope, I hope that some people who, who might want to contribute to the short box yeah. can go and watch all the beginning part where, where you explain and, and how to set it up. And then it's going to be easier for them to, to go through this. Yeah. And maybe we find some way to make it easier even more. To, <laughs> to like with the Docker Compose. That would be okay. great, I think. Yeah. Good. OK, so thank you very much. And uh, by this, we are finishing the video. So bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. bye.